One of the best ways to make great long-term investments is learning how to properly value assets. Whether it's stocks or real estate investment trusts, calculating the intrinsic value will give you a great idea of what an investment is actually worth. In this video, I'm extremely excited to release my new real estate investment trust valuation model. This is a great tool that will allow you to easily find what a real estate investment trust is actually worth. And if we come down here, we can see the different tabs we have. We have a stock screener. We have four different valuation models. We have an AFFO multiples, a historical price to FFO, a dividend discount model, and a net asset value. And all these valuations are going to roll into our output tab. This is a great tool because much of the process is completely automated. So you can see currently we're looking at Omega healthcare investors, but depending on what ticker I put in right here, you can see all of this data is going to automatically load in. So if you want to look at O, we can pull in all this data. If we want to look at a different REIT, we can just hit enter here and you can see all of this data is going to automatically load in. So let's go ahead and go step by step over exactly how this valuation model works. If you'd like to be able to download this, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So let's go ahead and start with our tutorial. So let's say we want to perform a stock analysis on OHI, Omega Healthcare Investors. I'll plug it in here and hit enter and we can see we have our business metrics listed right here. We have lots of dividend data, very important right here. We have our 2050 and 200 day moving averages. And then we have lots of metrics that I like to look at right here. Then obviously we have our chart right here, which is adjustable. We're currently looking at a 700 day change. We can adjust this to whatever we want. So if we wanted to look at 365, we plug that number in hit enter. And now we're looking at a one year chart. Here you can see we have our one year return and we also have our two year return listed right here. So this is a really cool stock screener, completely automated. But let's go ahead and start looking at our different valuation models. And the first one we're gonna look at is the AFFO multiples valuation. And if you're familiar with the multiples valuation, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take companies that are similar in structure to OHI, and we're gonna see how the market is valuing them. So typically when we do this for stocks, we're not gonna be using a price to AFFO multiple. We're gonna be taking something like a price to earnings multiple. But the way that the market values reads is gonna be a little bit different. Price to AFFO is gonna be a better way to see how the market is valuing these companies. Now, some people will typically use FFO for this, but I made a little note to the side why we're using AFFO instead of FFO. And you can kind of pause the video and read this right here if you're curious as to why that is. But okay, so the first step for this valuation is we're gonna find three to four comparable companies to OHI. This is gonna be where you research OHI's business structure and you wanna find companies that are, again, similar to OHI. So really what we're gonna be looking for is healthcare style REITs. So I went ahead and did some research and found a few. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and plug in their stock ticker and hit enter. And you can see we have two things automatically load in. We have the company name and its current stock price as of right now will automatically load in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for a few other companies right here. And okay, so now we have our four companies. Now it's really important that you find companies that are as close to the company we're comparing them to as possible, as that's gonna provide the most accurate valuation. So now we need to get their price to AFFO multiple. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this. You could plug in what their AFFO is right here, and then you could take the stock price and divide it by that to get the multiple that we're chasing. But we can also just go straight to Seeking Alpha and pull this data in depending on what company we are looking at. Now Seeking Alpha is a tool that I absolutely love and the team over at Seeking Alpha was kind enough to give me an affiliate code at the link in the description. If you use that, you will get a lot of money off on a one year subscription. So go ahead and click the link in the description if that's something you're interested in. I've been using them a lot lately and I have really loved their services. But let's go ahead and jump over to Seeking Alpha. So we're currently looking at Omega Healthcare Investors. If we jump back over to our spreadsheet, it looks like the first company you wanna look at is DOC. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Seeking Alpha. We can come right here and search DOC and we can see it'll come up right here. So we'll click here. Now Seeking Alpha makes it really easy to find this metric. We just need to come here and click on valuation. We'll scroll down and we want to look at for the trailing 12 months, which we can see right here. Their price to AFFO was sitting at 14.88. So let's go ahead and jump over to our valuation spreadsheet and we can plug that in right here. Now all we want to do is repeat the process for these three other tickers right here. So we'll go ahead and jump back over. We'll click SBRA for our next REIT and hit enter. Scroll down, here is the number we're looking for, 8.66. So we'll go ahead and plug that in as well. And we'll do it two more times. 
And so you can see how easy this is with Seeking Alpha, how quickly we can pull these metrics into our spreadsheet. Okay, so now we have all of these metrics for our comparable companies. The last thing we need to do is pull in OHI. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Seeking Alpha and we'll do this one more time, OHI and hit enter. Scroll down and we can see their price to AFFO right here at 10.65. So I'll come right here and plug that in and hit enter. And you can see now that we have all this data in, we automatically have an intrinsic value calculated for OHI. So let's go ahead and explain exactly what's happening here. We're looking at what the average price to AFFO is for these comparable companies, and we can see it's slightly higher than OHIs, which means that OHI is slightly undervalued when compared to these other companies. So you can see the formula right here. Essentially what this is doing is if we come right here, I'll try to visualize this. We're taking the average price to AFFO and dividing it by this number here. And essentially what this is saying, if you can see that, it's 1.15. It's saying that these companies are valued 1.15 times more than OHI according to the market. So we take this number and we multiply it by OHI's price to AFFO, and this is the number that we're gonna get. So that's our first valuation. You can see we came to an intrinsic value of $34.87, and we can see OHI's current trading price is $30.22, slightly below the intrinsic value. Now the next valuation model that we're gonna to jump to is the historical price to FFO model. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because it's not gonna give us an exact price per share for this valuation, but it's really important because it's gonna allow us to see how this company has historically traded with a price to FFO multiple, and we're gonna compare it to where it's at today and see if it's in line with its history or if it's a little overvalued or undervalued, historically speaking. So the first thing that we need is our historical price per share. Now there's a lot of places that you could obviously pull this from, but we're gonna go ahead and jump over to Yahoo Finance because they're gonna make it relatively easy to see this. You can also pull this from Seeking Alpha. But if we come here and click on historical data, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do max. We wanna look at historical prices right here and click on apply. Now we're gonna take today's date, you can see right here, December 1st, 2022. Um, and we're gonna take the opening price of $30.43. So let's go ahead and jump back over here. And so that's gonna be our trailing 12 month number right there. And now we're gonna do the exact same. We're gonna take December 1st for 2021 all the way through as much data as we have up to 2012. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward in the video and plug all those numbers in. You go ahead and do the same. Okay, so I've jumped forward and you can see I plugged in the historical price per share for OHI and I plugged it in on December 1st for each of these years. Now you can see there's a couple of years I didn't plug in here. That's because um, we actually have missing data here for historical FFO for share in 2018 and 2019. If you have just a couple of years of missing data, um, it's really okay if you still have plenty of other years of data here. Typically we like as much data as possible, but it's not too big of a deal if you're missing just a couple of years. But the next thing we need is our historical FFO per share. So if we jump back over to Seeking Alpha, typically where you can find this is if we go to financials here, we're currently looking at the income statement. If we scroll down here to the bottom, sometimes you'll be able to find FFO per share. Now we can see right here FFO is listed, but it looks like FFO per share is not. Um, if we were to look at a more popular REIT like Realty Income and scroll down, I'm pretty sure that we can see that it is listed right here. Let's see, where is it? Uh, okay, so FFO for share. So it, it does list it here, but it's not listed for OHI, but we can actually still manually find this information. So what we're gonna do, so if we come down here, we can see we still have FFO listed from 2012 to 2021 and trailing 12 months. So what we can do is we'll come here and we'll just copy all of this information right here and plug it into our spreadsheet. We can just come over here to the side and plug it in right here so you can see all that data I just plugged in. Now we need the historical shares outstanding. If we do that, we can get the metric that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and scroll up and see if we can find this. Basic weighted average shares outstanding. This is the number that we want to pull in. So let's go ahead and copy this over and we'll jump back over to our spreadsheet and we'll plug this in right here. So now what we need to do is to get our metric, we'll just come below this, we'll do equals, we'll take this number and divide by this number, and we can drag this all the way over 
and you can see now we have the data that we need. Here's our two years of missing data. But let's go ahead and take this right here and we can come back over and plug this in here. Looks like I need to paste value, so we'll do paste special, values only. And then we'll come and plug in the rest of this data here. So I'll plug this in for 2020, we'll paste values only. Now we're gonna plug in our trailing 12 months. So now we have all the data that we need in order to perform our analysis right here. And you can see all of this has automatically filled into our chart and our historical price to FFO is automatically filled in. So essentially what we're doing is we're looking how they have historically traded with a price to FFO multiple. So the average price to FFO multiple over the last 10 years looks like is about 11.56. And we can see their trailing 12 months is 11.77. Again, the average price to FFO over the last 10 years is about 11.56. Now that leads me to believe, especially when I look at this chart, that they are trading at a fair value. Now sometimes we'll find um, REITs that do trade at a premium. So for example, if we did these other valuations and kind of saw that it looks like they may be overvalued, it'd be really important to look at our historical price to FFO model and see if it is overvalued according to that. But if it's in line with where it's been over the last 10 years, maybe it's really just a REIT that tends to trade at a premium. But let's go ahead and move on and look at our dividend discount model. And if you've watched the channel before, the dividend discount model is probably something you're familiar with, but essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna value a company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing over time. Now, if we jump over to our stock screener, we can see here pay, uh, dividend yield of 8.9%, but the payout ratio is currently sitting at 153%. But if you know anything about REITs, the payout ratio is not really a good way to judge the safety of their dividend payouts. A much better metric to look at is gonna be the FFO payout ratio right here. Now there's multiple places you could look this up. You could definitely find it on Seeking Alpha. That's typically where I find it. But since this is just an example tutorial, I'm gonna save some time and just go ahead and plug it in 80%. I don't know if that's actually the number or not, but let's go ahead and keep moving forward. But now what we need to do is plug in the quarterly dividend payouts right here. And again, multiple places you can find this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to Yahoo Finance since I already have this pulled up. We can come here and click on dividends only and click on apply. And we can see exactly how much they've been paying out in dividends over the last few years. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and plug in to our spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these numbers in. We can see currently it was sitting at 0.67. The year before that, it was 0.67. The year before that, it was 0.67. And the year before that, it was actually 0.66. So there was a little bit of a dividend increase there. But the year before that, it was 0.66 as well. So right here, we can see our year over year growth rates for their dividend payouts. The average growth rate was just 0.38%. So not good dividend growth at all. But again, they did have a really nice starting dividend yield of close to 9%. So now what we need to do is project the growth rate for those dividend payments for the foreseeable future. Now, obviously, we're gonna project a very low dividend growth rate. Let's go ahead and plug in 0 0.005. And again, this is gonna be something that you're gonna research and come to a conclusion of what you think the growth rate should be. Maybe you think it'll be higher, maybe you think it'll be lower, but you wanna plug in your growth rate projection right here. And then you wanna plug in your discount rate. And this is typically gonna be in the range of about 7.5 to 9%. I have videos on my channel of how to calculate discount rate, but we're not gonna go over that right now. We're just gonna assume about an 8% discount rate. So when I hit enter, you can see we come to a dividend discount model price per share of $35.91. Now let's go ahead and keep moving forward and we will look at our last valuation. And that is gonna be net asset value. Now this is a pretty involved valuation, but if you do it well, it can be a really good way to value a real estate investment trust. Now I do have a couple of problems with this REIT. And that's because it really has to take in a lot of assumptions about growth rate and cap rate for it to be an accurate valuation. So I think unless you have really good and accurate information, it doesn't always provide a fair value. And that's one of the reasons I created a automated sensitivity analysis over here, but we'll talk more about that in just a second. But the first thing that we need for our net asset valuation is we're gonna plug in these numbers here, our NOI, our growth rate, our cap rate, and our total debt, and the number of shares, and all this other data is gonna automatically fill in itself. So let's go ahead and jump over to Seeking Alpha, and we wanna find net operating income for Omega Healthcare investors. So we're currently looking at the income statement, so if we scroll down, we should be able to find that. We're currently looking for the trailing 12 months. So here we go, we have operating income. Right here, we can see 
509 million. So let's go ahead and come over here. We'll plug that in 509, 300. And you can see our data is starting to automatically fill in. You can see our sensitivity analysis next year's NOI has automatically filled in. And now we need to project our growth rate. And there's actually a really easy and automated way to do this that I've created. And we're gonna use this down here. So let's go ahead and jump back over to Seeking Alpha. Let's say we want data dating back to, let's see, about 10 years ago. What we can do is if we jump over to Seeking Alpha, let's see how many years we have right here. We'll go ahead and highlight this, see if I can grab this. And we will copy this data over to our spreadsheet. And I'll click Command V. And this is gonna allow us to see our year over year growth rates. Let's go ahead and remove this number here. So now we can see our year over year growth rate. Let's go ahead and fix the formatting for this here. We'll remove some of the decimals and we will turn this into a percentage. So it looks like the average NOI growth rate for this company has been about 14.59% year over year. So let's say I do some more research and some more analyzing and I look at what analysts are expecting. And based off of that, maybe I decide I wanna project about an 11% growth rate. Again, this is just an example. This isn't actually an analysis on OHI. So we'll hit enter. And now we have next year's expected NOI. And that's one of the numbers that we've been working for. Now, this next part is the part that I really think makes it hard to perform an accurate analysis with a net asset value. And we need to project a cap rate. I think the best way to do this is just really analyze and um, look up what other analysts are expecting for the cap rate for OHI. And let's say we come to the conclusion that we expect it to be a cap rate of about 4.5. I'll hit enter here and you can see the data for our cap rate on our sensitivity analysis is automatically loaded in and we have it in intervals of 0.5. And we'll come back to that again later, but essentially we have all of our data loaded in here now. Now we need the total debt for OHI. And we'll jump over to Yahoo Finance for this. And what we can do is if we come over here and click on financials and click on balance sheet, we can scroll down and we can see total debt is listed right here. So let's go ahead and plug in that number. And I'll come here, I will plug that in five, two, five, three, five, three, six, one, two, three and hit enter and it looks like I added one extra zero so let's go ahead and remove that. So now we have the net asset value for OHI. So now the last thing we're gonna need is our number of shares outstanding. There's a multitude of places you can find that. We'll stick with Yahoo Finance. If we come over here and click on statistics and scroll down, we can see right here, it looks like we have our shares outstanding at 234 million. So we'll go ahead and come here and plug that in. Two, three, four, one, Eight, oh, one, two, three, and hit enter. So now we have our net asset value per share, which is the intrinsic value of $31.29 per share. And we can see our sensitivity analysis has automatically loaded in. And if you're not familiar with the sensitivity analysis, essentially we have two variables right here. We have next year's NOI, which when you go up, it's going down in 5% increments. And when you go up here, it's going up in 5% increments. And we have the same thing for our cap rate applied. So essentially we can see based on different scenarios of what our growth rate projection for next year's NOI and what our cap rate is, we can see what a fair value would be. So right here in the middle is 31.29, which is the net asset value per share we have listed right here. But let's say we were right about next year's NOI, but the cap rate is actually 4%. Based off of that, we can see in a fair intrinsic value would be about $38 per share. So essentially, this is just gonna be a good way to see how these different variables come into play and what fair values are for them based off of that. So when we jump over to our output tab, let's go ahead and plug in our net asset value here. So it's completely automated. We can see now we have all of the numbers for our valuations. We have our AFFO multiples, our dividend discount model, and our net asset value. When we plug those in, we come to an intrinsic value of $34 per share. And the current trading price for this company is $30.15. Now I'm a valued dividend investor, so I do always want to apply a margin of safety. So let's say I wanted to be pretty conservative with my investments and wanted to apply a 25% margin of safety. I would plug that in here, hit enter. And based off of this, we could see we'd come to an acceptable buy price of $25 per share. Now, again, 
One of the things that isn't listed on this valuation because it doesn't give us a specific price point is the historical to price to FFO. But I think this is really important to come back and look at and see if it's tr trading historically close to its fair value. But there you go. That's how you use my real estate investment trust valuation model. I think this is a phenomenal tool. It's going to help you make better investments when it comes to real estate investment trusts. If you'd like to be able to download it, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.